Joyce, you've been the leader of a school that's had really remarkable success in problem solving and assessment. I wonder what advice you would have for leaders of other schools who would like to get started with this kind of work and achieve the success you have. Well, I appreciate you saying that we've had a lot of success, and, um, but it's something we've definitely been working on for a long time. Um, I think that one of the things that's really important um, when you get started, whether it's problem solving or whatever area you're going to work on, I think people have to see the need for it. And I think one of the big things here was that um, way back, it was when we were doing the NSREs in this state at fourth grade, our data showed that our kids had good computational skills, they, had, they really knew their concepts, but in problem solving, um, our performance wasn't very good in problem solving. And so people saw the need and wanted to make that better. We're always about how do we do better? What can we do um, to help our kids learn more? And so we really wanted to take a look at problem solving. So I think it was really important um, that people saw it as a priority. And you know everybody knew it was you know, GE 7.1. Um, but I think people felt that problem solving was really applying all the math, their skills and concepts. And, and, and it was so important to go beyond just getting the answer. Yeah, you know, they could get the answer with their computational skills, but then what could they do with it? So I think that, first of all, it was, we saw it as a need. Um, and then we made it a priority and we focused on it for several years. And I think that that is something that when you decide to work on something, it can't be, you go to a couple workshops, you have a couple meetings about it, and then you're done working on it. Um, you have to have that sustained professional development. And I think that was really crucial to how we've improved. Um, we had the resources in terms of um, our math consultant, our work with Deb Armitage for several years. Um, she came in and did modeling. She'd meet with the teachers. Um, we did, um, as a school, we did calibration, um, double scoring, all of that. Um, you know, we sent people to network meetings, but we did this over several years. And I think that that focus, sustained professional development, was just was just really, really key. Um, I'm not somebody who jumps on every bandwagon, and I think that that's really important. You cannot ask people to do a million things and you're going to do them all well. You have to focus on certain things, and we decided that problem solving was one of those things based on our data that we wanted to focus on. So I think that that professional development and, and having those resources was really important. Um, we are a um, very uh, low budget school. Out of 109 elementary schools in this state, um, with, a tuition, uh, with a joint or union high school, out of 109, our budget per equalized pupil is 108th. So when I say the resources, we don't have a lot of financial resources, but in terms of what we did with problem solving, we had grant funding to have for that math consultant, and then we sent people to free things like the network meetings. Um, so that was really important. I think another key piece is our fourth grade teacher, who at that time, math portfolio was done in fourth grade, <laughs> is just an incredible um, advocate for problem solving. She is so passionate about it and she thinks that it is just such a wonderful <laughs> thing to do and she loves teaching it. And when you have someone who is so passionate about something, it really helps to spread it to other people. And they see the need and they want to do it too. And so that was important. Um, I think when you start with people who are the, the real believers, and then it kind of spreads and you give them time to share, um, and that helps. Um, I think the, another thing that helped us here is that when we hired new teachers, um, because once we'd done all this professional development, then all of a sudden we had staff, a couple people, one person leave to become a principal, one person retire. Um, we had 
actually two people retired during that time. Um, we had this new staff coming in. Oh, you know, how do you get them up to speed? And so it was really important that you continue and you continue to follow up. So we offered them all the same type of training. Um, two of them, before they even started the school year, as soon as they were hired, came in and observed other people doing problem solving. Um, we had Deb Armitage come in and do a training with them before their contracts even started. They came in. Um, they came in and observed other people doing problem solving. So really getting them um, on board and, and getting them up to speed in problem solving. And they had both done problem solving when they were in school. So they were at least even familiar with it to start with. And then um, another important piece I think is that with follow through is the accountability. Um, you know, people have to know, you know, what the expectations are. And here, we, in terms of our um, problem solving, we have um, pieces that we do with different units. And at the end of the year, um, there are certain ones that scores are turned in for certain assessment pieces at the end of the year. And, you know, people have to know that that's what they need to do. Um, and I think that people here don't have a problem with that because they love teaching problem solving. And it's seen as a part of our curriculum. It's not an add-on, it's not an extra, um, it's, it's 7.1 <laughs> and it's important to teach and for our kids to learn. Um, so those are some of the things that I think in terms of um, you know, helping us here be successful with problem solving, um, that it really was that people saw a need and then we had the professional development for a sustained period of time and, and the follow through and the accountability. Um, so I think that's really what's helped us here. 7.1 is the state standard. Yeah, GE 7.1. Yeah. For, for problem solving. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what that. it is. <laughs> Could you speak a little bit about uh, integrating uh, the problem solving <clears throat> with the rest of the curriculum? You, you mentioned that it's, it stands there, but. Uh, yeah, that question. Um, you know, how is it integrated like with our curriculum or traditional curriculum? I, I, it kind of throws me a little bit because I see problem solving as a part of our curriculum. As I was just saying, it's not an extra, it's not something that, you know, that we, we feel is added on. I think what's um, maybe helped in, you know, if we want to talk about integrating it more in our curriculum, um, I think the problem solving binder that we have now that um, Deb A had worked on that has pieces that go with every unit in investigations. And so when somebody's teaching a unit on fractions, it's really easy to go to that binder and pull out you know, tasks that go with that unit. Um, and so I think that you know, that's really helped a lot, um, that they have pieces to do throughout the unit and then they have an assessment piece for, for each one of those units in investigations and then that's all aligned now. And so I think that um, that's been a really good thing. Um, I think as people have done problem solving over time and they're just becoming more and more comfortable with it, um, they, what I'm excited about is they make up their own problems now. Like, you know, the other day, kindergarten went on um, uh, sugaring, you know, to a sugar house. And one of the things they wanted to do was talk about the math that they saw. And so the kindergarten teacher gave them a, a problem solving task about maple sugaring. And, and so, it, I mean, to me, it's just everything they're doing, it's become a natural thing to do problem solving, mm -hmm. you know, and connect it with the real life things. I mean, and, and that's what's exciting about problem solving is it really is doing, you know, making those connections with real life. Yeah. What changes have you seen in your teachers? That, <laughs> that is, I think, one of the most exciting things because I think when we first started teaching problem solving there was a focus on teaching the you know the process the procedure of problem solving and and getting that end product you know making sure they had their approach and you know their reasoning and their solution and their representation and their language and okay it's all down there but it, it's I think it's totally different now I think as they have become more confident and comfortable with teaching problem solving and the kids now and the upper grades especially come in with so many skills that the teachers now use problem solving so much more to inform their instruction. The questions that they ask, 
um, just go so much deeper into what are kids thinking and how do um, you know how are they solving a problem? Is it the most effective strategy? Are there other other strategies they could use? I think that they have come so far in their questioning of kids and really getting at the math thinking that they're doing and being able to diagnose right on the spot you know what why somebody's having a problem is there some misconception that they have are they having a problem doing calculation and what that has led to is so much better differentiation. I mean, they are so excited that one teacher said to me yesterday, I can challenge every kid in my class. And it's so easy with problem solving to do that. And so they are able to, when they're doing a problem, to look and see, okay, you know, this, these kids are having a problem with this, these kids are having, and put them into small groups. And you know, one teacher said to me, it's like, it's like I have an individual plan for every kid. And I just think that's so exciting that they can do that. And, and they all feel, that. And, and several people said to me yesterday, I wouldn't ever not do problem solving. Like even if it wasn't whatever standard, you know, I wouldn't not do it because they really see the value and the benefit of it. And I think they just go so much deeper now in terms of connections and you know, what kinds of representations kids can have. And um, it's just been such growth, I think, in terms of their, their instruction. And, you know, and I think they would say it's, their questioning has just gotten so much better. So I think it just really has, instead of trying to get an end product now, it's really, it's that whole process and in informing their instruction and, and really assessing kids as they go and, and making and, and giving them what they really need to take them to the next level. And I think that's one thing that they've been really excited about too and I think the kids get excited about is with problem solving you can really see the growth over time and I think that's really empowering for kids and for teachers <laughs> you know to be able to see that growth.